All right. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ivan Vukpavlovich. This is my good friend, Russell Perry Firestone. This is episode, oh, I want to say 10, maybe. Okay. Getting close. It's nine probably. or 10. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's 10. It's 10. Because there were five without you, and now uh, we just... Oh, like, total, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, today is the 25th of April, 2020. Um, this episode will likely air on Sunday, May 3rd. So a little, little over a week. And tonight we are doing something a little bit different. Russell and I have each individually assembled a list of, in my case, I think a dozen items. I'm not sure how many he uh, has come up with. Uh, for people who haven't gotten into the classic uh, way of dressing, but would like to. In my case, what I did was try to construct it in such a way, and I'm going to try to present it in an order, which might appeal to someone who I am assuming dress, is used to dressing in a t-shirt, jeans, sneakers, things like that. Um, so I do assume that you own a pair of jeans that you wear regularly and that you like. And at the same time, I want to try to ease this person into the style for two reasons. Now, first of all, if the person is already interested, they're not going to be skittish about getting into it. But I want to try to incorporate this clothing slowly in a way that works with their current lifestyle and the way they dress, and also in a way that doesn't cause too many raised eyebrows. You know, if, if you're a guy who shows up to work in a t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers every day, and then all of a sudden you come in with a full-blown suit and tie, people are going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, who are you? Right? So I've kind of constructed my dozen pieces, and don't worry, we will arrive at a full-blown suit by the end of it, but uh, I kind of wanted to do it in a way that'll kind of ease into the situation and maybe not be a sudden departure so that uh, you don't get any uh, confrontations in the workplace. Uh, also, I tried to construct this kind of introductory set in a way that by the end of it, uh, you might be uh, set with a number of outfits uh, good for just about any occasion, whether it's business or social. Um, so before we get going, as always, I'd like to talk about what I'm wearing and then I'd like to uh, turn it over to Russell so he can uh, talk about what he's wearing and that, then we'll get into it. I am wearing a light blue poplin weave button-down collar shirt. Uh, it's a button-down collar, uh, but it's not a Brooks Brothers. Uh, this one happens to be Scott Barber. Uh, and over it, I'm wearing a, what the manufacturer calls a camel color uh, long sleeve V-neck sweater. I would maybe <laughs> put it closer to a Vicuna. <laughs> it's not quite light enough to be a true camel. Um, Inside, I'm wearing a uh, neckerchief, which is to say it is a silk bandana uh, tied loosely around my neck. Uh, has a similar effect as an ascot, but far less formal. It's, it's a far more casual. It's probably the most casual way of covering the neck if you're going to cover your neck, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can't see it, but I'm wearing navy blue chinos, uh, navy blue socks, and uh, I'm not wearing shoes, but if I were, I'd probably be wearing some kind of loafer, uh, either a penny loafer, which we'll actually get to uh, momentarily as part of my list, 
a bit loafer uh, for someone who is really into the whole uh, preppy thing. Uh, uh, a uh, tassel loafer would uh, go very well with this outfit, especially if it were like a suede. Um, but I uh, kind of threw this outfit on in anticipation of taking uh, my dog out later tonight to do her business, in which case I'll be wearing my brown slippers. Hey, Russell, how are you? I'm doing well. <clears throat> uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about uh, what you're, you're wearing? Uh, okay. Um, this time it's just uh, pretty simple. Um, this is just a, it's an Oxford cloth sports shirt, uh, buttoned down, and khaki chinos, and then just some uh, brown cap toe boots that I've had for a long time. Oh, no kidding. I, I don't know if I've seen those. I think you may have one time. I wore them uh, in to Capra one time. I assume like ankle boots? Yes. Uh, brogue? No, no, no brogue. Oh, so, so, so just a plain capto boot. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow, I don't know if I've seen those. Oh, I've oh. had them for a long time. I just don't wear them too often. Sure. Um, but uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Today's a very just pared down. Sure. Very easy. American look. Mm hmm. That's it. Yep. Okay. So let me get into my list and then I'm very, very eager uh, to see what Russell has come up with and uh, see how much deviation or overlap there is. Okay. So again, um, I should mention also, and this is a topic that we may get into a little bit if we have time, although I have a feeling this is going to take up quite a bit of time to get through. Um, I assume a few things, as I said, uh, that you have a pair of jeans that you like the fit and style of, and they're not, they don't have holes in them, you know, uh, they're not raggedy. Uh, I also assume uh, most of the things that I am going to be suggesting will work with most complexion and contrast types, uh, meaning uh, most skin tones, and uh, more importantly, uh, most contrast sets, meaning, I'm a pretty high contrast uh, individual. I have very dark hair and not the whitest skin, but you know, definitely uh, a light skinned guy. Um, unless you have a superbly low contrast, light uh, complexion combination, most of the things I'm uh, suggesting will work for you. So meaning unless you have literally like gray hair and bone white skin, which some people do, uh, these, these will uh, work for you. So you want to get into classic style, you don't know where to start, and I'm assuming that you want to ease in. The first thing I'm going to suggest is something that will likely work with your wardrobe that you can just start wearing right away, pepper it into your, you know, uh, daily routine, wear it every, once every week or two uh, with your sneakers and your jeans, but you're just going to swap out that t-shirt for the ubiquitous Oxford cloth button-down shirt. Um, this one is a Brooks Brothers. I would suggest you get some kind of classic subtle pattern. This has a gold and uh, blue stripe alternating kind of pattern. And you can just put this on with your jeans, stuck it in, wear it with sneakers, and it's not going to raise that many eyebrows, but you will already be incorporating a classic piece of American menswear that as your closet grows, you can incorporate into many, many, many outfits, okay? It is a very comfortable shirt like we discussed uh, last time. Uh, so it's not going to uh, really feel that different from the t-shirt that you're used to. It's a really comfortable cloth, uh, but it's going to just add a slight elevation in your elegance with everything that you already own. Um, 
you can throw a leather jacket on top of this or whatever kind of jacket you're already used to wearing. You can even put a hoodie over it, whatever. It's going to work with the rest of your wardrobe just about no matter what. And it's a great way to start incorporating timeless uh, pieces into your already existing wardrobe, you know, because one thing that you don't want to do is go out and say, oh, okay, Yvonne just said, uh, these are the first 12 pieces that I should buy and just go out and buy all of them. That's the worst thing you can do, right? You need to ease into the lifestyle and style and build it one piece at a time so uh, that you learn what you like, what you don't like, and you really take the time to incorporate uh, this style little by little into your new uh, kind of way of dressing. And then let's say, you know, a couple of weeks go by and they maybe you get a couple of compliments. Hey, you know, nice shirt. I, I, I like this. This is a nice uh, deviation, etc. cetera. Uh, without raising too many eyebrows and wearing with the exact same outfit, I'm actually going to suggest that the second uh, piece that you buy is not a piece of clothing, but indeed a pair of shoes. I'm assuming that you are mostly either wearing sneakers, maybe you're wear, uh, wearing work boots, you know, uh, that's, that's a very popular thing to, to wear with jeans. If you're going to uh, start getting into that more classic look with the jeans, with the uh, Oxford, get yourself a nice pair of brown loafers. You'll be able to wear them right away with the jeans, uh, with the Oxford button down. Uh, but then later, you'll be able to incorporate them into a vast number of outfits. They don't have to be penny loafers like this, although I do think that the penny loafer is probably the easiest one to get into if you're not uh, trying to raise any eyebrows. Uh, there's no loud pieces of metal here. There's no tassels, you know. It's just a nice brown pair of shoes. People will just might notice them, but uh, it's not a jarring thing to wear. Uh, it might be jarring for you to wear at first because you're not used to it. But uh, overall, as far as how loafers are perceived, a nice dark brown pair of penny loafers isn't a jarring thing to put on. So, then you spend another couple of weeks, you've worn the shirt a couple more times, you've worn your new shoes a couple of times, and uh, you want to know where to go next. And the next thing that I suggest is perhaps the starting point for many, many men on their journey into tailored menswear. Um, and that is the ubiquitous navy blazer. If you want to dress yourself up a little bit, you can be wearing just about anything within reason. And you throw on a navy blazer, it immediately dresses you up a notch or two. Uh, and I mean that even if you're in a t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers. These days, although it's not one of my preferred looks, that is a very, very accepted and common look. Um, indeed, uh, for those in either the tech or creative industries, that's actually a very, very common look. You throw on a blazer over jeans, t-shirt, and uh, sneakers. Now, granted, most of the time these sneakers are going to be dress sneakers, really nice, plain leather sneakers as opposed to athletic sneakers. But even with athletic sneakers, you can pull off this look, okay? And then, in order to complete our first complete outfit, if you will, I would say, Get yourself some nice khaki chinos. 
these are going to feel very similar to the way that your jeans feel. You know, this isn't, uh, they're cotton. Uh, they're going to probably be a more refined cotton than the denim, right? And the cut is going to be a little bit different. The rise on them is likely going to be higher than your jeans uh, and all of that. But if you wear khaki chinos, a Oxford cloth button down shirt, penny loafers, and a blazer, that is, you are now in a really classic, ubiquitous, American look. It's a very uh, New England uh, kind of uh, ivy uh, kind of look, but it's very put together and you're going to look good at just about any casual function, certainly during the day, but these days, even at night, you're going to be better dressed than most people. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm talking strictly about Austin, Texas here, of course. Um, but you are going to have, you know, this is the kind of stuff that uh, Ralph Lauren dreams about. <laughs> this is that look, uh, preppy, ivy, very American, very put together, casual, but considered, you know? And as I mentioned, that is a great uh, daytime look, still casual. Let's say you need to dress it up just a little bit. Uh, you have an evening event and you want to go a little bit darker, a little bit more tailored, um, and want to, you know, you're, you've now got an outfit that you can wear all together and uh, have that classic kind of American New England look. But those chinos, you can swap out for your jeans in just about any outfit you've been wearing already. That shirt, shirt you can put into just about any outfit you've been wearing to get, uh, already. Same thing with the shoes. As I mentioned, the blazer you can throw on over just about anything, right? But now we're going to put together your first true tailored evening outfit. And now I would suggest that you buy two things together. One, is a pair of charcoal slacks, mid gray to dark gray slacks, okay? This is a really nice evening look along with your blazer and your shoes, right? I'm not a huge fan personally of wearing brown shoes in the evening, but these days it's absolutely acceptable, especially if they're dark brown, okay? And then along with that, get yourself a nice white dress shirt, okay? Uh, if you feel comfortable with it and feel like, you know, as a, I mentioned last episode, uh, this list won't be including accessories or socks or anything like that, so ties, pocket squares, and all of that. But if you're comfortable with it at this point, I would actually suggest getting a French cuff white shirt because it's going to be just a little bit dressier um, and uh, assuming that you want to get some cufflinks as well, uh, it's really just going to elevate the elegance of the style. Uh, you wear this with your new charcoal slacks, your penny loafer shoes, uh, your uh, blazer, and then you can wear a tie if the event calls for it. You can wear a neckerchief. You can wear an ascot. You can go open collar. If uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of open collar with French cuff shirts, but people do it and it still can look good. You're going to be ready for just about any kind of evening event where cocktail attire or black tie is not specified. So if it's just you know, a nice dressy occasion, you'll be able to handle it. Uh, you can wear this to weddings, you know, uh, these days suits 
or tuxedos aren't required at all weddings. This is a nice dressy uh, ensemble to do that. And then the next piece, very, very few complexions can't handle this. Um, so I would suggest a charcoal suit. I'd probably suggest a two piece single breasted for your first suit. Uh, but that's really up to, uh, up to you. You can get a three piece, you can get a double breasted. Uh, ultimately, I think these days in Austin, a two piece uh, single breasted makes the most sense, especially for your first suit. Uh, but this is just a very dark gray two piece suit. If your complexion for whatever reason can't uh, take gray, uh, a navy suit is going to be just as useful. You already have the shirt. Um, these days you can wear loafers with a suit. It's not my favorite thing to do if you're wearing a tie. If you're wearing a suit casually without a tie, maybe a, a ascot, maybe a neckerchief, maybe no neckwear, then I think that's Great, I love that, I do it. But uh, uh, if your goal is to wear it casually, you're all set. If you are now venturing into uh, a desire to have a really put together, A, business look, B, uh, cocktail attire or black tie optional look, or any very elegant uh, evening look, or C, God forbid, a funeral, my next suggestion after that uh, charcoal suit is going to be a pair of black cap toe, or plain toe, but probably cap toe, Oxford shoes. Because a charcoal suit, black Oxford shoes, white shirt, burgundy tie, there is no business meeting, no business interview, or no cocktail uh, event that you can't get through. You swap out the tie for a black one, uh, you are ready for the more somber, uh, you know, funeral uh, events. And then after that, it's just a few more pieces that I would suggest um, to simply augment these two basic outfits that we've put together. We've got your, you know, uh, blazer, chinos, loafers, Oxford button down, uh, kind of casual daytime look. We've got our charcoal suit, business, or cocktail attire, or funeral, uh, or e any kind of very elegant evening look. Let's now talk about just a few pieces to add in that you can wear with either set uh, to just expand your uh, possibilities. The first thing I would say is get a couple of more shirts. I would suggest a nice light blue uh, dress shirt. In this case, it has a subtle stripe pattern. Uh, and I only show this one to you because I don't wear plain light blue dress shirts. It's just something uh, that's never worked for me, although it looks fantastic on other people, especially if you have a ruddy or pink element in your complexion like you do, Russell. You know, uh, light blue looks absolutely fantastic on you. Uh, I have more of an olive complexion, so while light blue works, um, it's not my go-to for myself, but I put a lot of people into light blue in, in, at work, you know. And then, uh, you know, I would suggest another white shirt, in this case, a twill uh, button-down collar, which is an elegant look, but slightly dressed down if you want to wear either outfit, your suit or your blazer without a tie. This is a great way to go. Uh, this is a great way to go with a neckerchief, open collar, you know. Like, man, if you put this on with your... Uh, blazer, your khakis, and your uh, penny loafers. I mean, you're, you're basically ready to go yachting. You know, like you're 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 ready for that seafaring uh, life. And then finally, the last two pieces. 
just to kind of expand on your possibilities in wardrobe, uh, I would go with a, maybe a, a second, uh, you know, or not a second, your first sports coat, right? As opposed to a blazer or a suit jacket, you know, something that deviates from navy. In my case, out of my closet, I pulled this plum Shetland tweed just as a uh, cold weather alternative that'll work with just about anything that I've already mentioned. Uh, but it can be a pattern sports coat. It can be, you know, blue checks. It can be, uh, and it doesn't have to be something this far off the beaten path. Uh, I just kind of chose to showcase this as uh, an alternative to the navy because it's such a deviation uh, and the charcoal gray in the suit. But uh, it can be something subtler. Um, it can be a nice gray Glen plaid. It can be just something, you know, as long as you bear in mind how it works with the rest of your wardrobe so that you can throw it on with just about anything else you're wearing. You know, this jacket actually works incredibly well with jeans very nicely with khakis, very nice with charcoal gray. I wear it with black slacks and a black shirt a lot. You know, black, 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 everything black except for this jacket, which is like the, the one showcase piece. Uh, so the operative concept, not this jacket necessarily, but another sports coat that will work with the rest of your wardrobe. And then finally, another pair of slacks. Uh, I would go for like a light to mid gray you know, because it'll work just as well with your navy blazer uh, as the rest of the, you know, both the khaki and the uh, dark gray slacks that you bought already. Um, uh, and then uh, after that, you know, we're up to a dozen now, but like you could go for a navy pair of slacks to, to play off of that plum coat or whatnot. But you know, after this, you've got nothing but options. Uh, you can keep going the classic menswear route and just expand on colors and uh, styles. Or at this point, you've got enough of a foundation, excuse me, in classic menswear uh, to where you can even start incorporating more fashion forward elements very, very easily. Um, because for example, you can, uh, throw on a nice sports shirt underneath that charcoal suit, and that's a very relaxed but dressy look. Uh, you can throw on a t-shirt under that uh, uh, charcoal suit with some fashion sneakers, and that's yet again another look. You know, with these first dozen pieces, I feel that you have, you know, in combination, probably a good four, five, six outfits that'll get you through just about any kind of, uh, situation in life uh, other than black tie. Um, so that then by the time you've bought all of these things and have worn them, you've started discovering your own preferences and you will need people like me far less and less. And you will start uh, forming your own opinions and uh, start being able to venture out on your own and incorporating new pieces into the capsule that we've uh, just created. So that's what I got. Uh, Hopefully. I like, I like your uh, bringing in the clothes there. That was a touch that uh, I don't have. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, I, you know, as you talk, uh, I, I, can, I can show things that my closet's literally like eight feet away from me, so I can run and, and <laughs> get stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, surprisingly, uh, what I was going to suggest is very similar. Uh, to what you've already shown. I figured. Um, I kind of came at this topic um, a little bit differently, um, not so specific uh, as far as pieces. I'm going to talk about specific pieces, but just generally how to think about it is kind of how I was thinking about it mm -hmm. based on my own experience, um, you know, with classic menswear. And, you know, this is more just my words of wisdom, so to speak, for people uh, who are, might be trying to get into this way of dressing. And the first thing um, I would say before you go in, um, if you're interested in classic menswear, is just to take an examination of 
your lifestyle and who you are. Um, because I'll, I'll say, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, Yvonne and I have hung out at uh, Capra and Cavelli many times, and I've seen a lot of customers come in. And one thing, obviously, that drives a lot of people to come in is there's an event going on, a wedding, uh, yes. something like that. They're getting married. And that's what's driving them in to buy uh, tailored clothing, so to speak. Um, but if you're somebody who's just more interested in dressing classically, uh, take a take a look at your lifestyle because when you walk into a store like Capra, if you're not familiar with this way of dressing, it can be overwhelming. Uh, you can you can go in and if you haven't thought about it at all beforehand, you you see a lot of things that appeal to you, but it may not in the moment um, it may not hit you as to what you know what should I be buying. You're just like oh I like that. And it might be a great piece and it might be something that you could wear with a lot of things, but you may end up not wearing it all that much because it doesn't fit into your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say just take an examination of your lifestyle or why do you want to buy these clothes or how are you going to wear them? Is it mainly for work or social uh, type engagements? And that'll kind of help you, you know, if you have thought about these things and if you talk to a clothier um, about kind of what you're looking for that, having this information can help them guide you in which direction might be best for you. Uh, and what I mean by that, it's like, um, are you somebody who wants to be a little bit more casual? You want to elevate your, your style, but you want to be more casual. Well, then I think like um, you were suggesting um, the chinos would be a better route than maybe buying uh, tailored slacks. And, and it can be just as versatile in your wardrobe uh, but the chinos are going to be in a level of formality a little bit lower than like wool slacks. Uh, and that's important because you can look at the exact same color combination, but one is more formal than the other. And that might drive ultimately how much you end up wearing it. Now, if you're somebody who just loves clothes, you're going to end up wearing it all anyways. But, mm -hmm. but just think about that before you go in. Um, and the other wisdom I'll pass on uh, through my own experience is, again, especially in the beginning, um, stay simple. I mean, any clothier is going to help keep you in that realm. And what I mean by that is um, the solids um, versus patterned garments are simpler, and you're going to be able uh, especially when you're new, you're going to be able to work these things in with other items easier. And when you start introducing pattern in your garments, it can be great, but it also adds a level of complexity um, that if you're not yet skilled uh, at pairing garments, that's where you can run into trouble or you can, you can start second guessing yourself when you're getting dressed. Uh, so that being said, um, where do I suggest specifically uh, you should start? Um, it's almost exactly where you said to start. Um, I would say uh, Oxford cloth shirts are a great starting point. Now, uh, the one thing I was going to suggest um, is to start with a white and maybe a light, a light blue Oxford cloth shirt. For most people, those are going to work um, great. And I personally like the Oxford cloth shirt because not only is it a classic American piece, especially the button down versions, but they're extremely versatile shirts. The material will work with anything. I would say, I mean, you can wear them, uh, wear an Oxford cloth shirt with a pair of jeans all the way up to, for me, uh, a sport coat and, um, dress trousers that mm -hmm. the Oxford cloth can cover everything in, in between there and be great. The only time I wouldn't personally wear an Oxford cloth. And I think you've mentioned this too before is with a suit. So I think that it's some people do it and it's not wrong. I mean, there's no right or wrong in any of this. Um, it's that collar, you know, uh, like it's the softness of the collar that to me doesn't work with a suit, you know, right. uh, it's just a slightly, too informal for me personally to pair with a suit, but it, it's a, it's an extremely versatile shirt. And I think that that's, what's played to its popularity through oh, time. Yeah. 
is the fact that it can be paired with so many things. Um, but again, I'd say start with uh, just a solid white um, and light blue Oxford cloth uh, shirt. And you'll find when you get into this that shirting is, um, is a great way to change the look of a basic garment as far as elevating or lowering the formality of it. Uh, so shirting is a very important part uh, of just classic style. And just while I'm on shirts, I would say um, beyond Oxford cloth, it's like you were saying, uh, to maybe get, uh, definitely get a white uh, broadcloth or twill uh, type shirt in there because that's a, and if you're new to this, dress you, know, shirt. Yeah. you understand what I mean, but it's a more formal shirt that would work with the, uh, the sport coat uh, and tie and slacks or, you know, it'll work with a suit. Uh, so to definitely at least get a white, um, broadcloth or twill type shirt. It's a more formal shirt than the Oxford cloth. But that, as far as in the beginning, will give you a wide range shirting wise, and it's not complicated. No. Uh, yeah, and, but stay away from uh, in the beginning until, unless you know, you're comfortable and the clothier can help you with the complexion issue, stay away from um, colors that can be more dangerous or um, like pinks and yellows and lavenders because those are going to work Greens. well with <laughs> yeah with certain people but not well with others so in the beginning if you're just walking in and you're not thinking about these things you're just buying shirts those are going to cause you potentially more headaches uh than just a blue and white shirt that's right uh, you can if you want um to add some pattern the shirt is a great place to start and it's like you were saying i would say uh, a white shirt with a blue stripe in there or a blue shirt with a white stripe um, is a great way in the beginning to add some pattern and really change the look of an outfit. Uh, so you can throw that in as a four shirt um, in the beginning. Uh, uh, beyond that, like I said, if, if you want the versatility, uh, I would say, uh, you know, you can get a pair of chinos. I would say with khaki, uh, Khaki, navy, or a gray chino. Those are great places to start because the gray and the khaki are pretty neutral, or they are neutral. They, you, know, you can pretty much pair that with anything and it'll work. Uh, the blue, the navy blue, is it's a color, but it works almost as a neutral. Um, and if, if you're somebody who's like, well, I don't really like to wear cotton pants, then I would go with those colors and trousers. Uh, I would always tell people, or whenever I think about this, I, if somebody asks me, I tell them, in the beginning, if you'll just stay in the middle of the room, as far as stay with mid-gray or um, kind of a, a middle khaki tan color, it's going to be extremely versatile. Uh, it's whenever you go too light or too dark that you're kind of, you're shifting uh, or you're, you're lessening the versatility of the garment. Um, so, you know, that's where your lifestyle, each individual is going to be a little different, but it's great the more you get into this uh, to have all the options available. Uh, as far as the first jacket that somebody should buy, it's just like you suggested, um, the Navy Blazer. That's definitely going to be the most versatile, especially in today's world. Uh, it's extremely easy to pair. Everything that we've talked about, I think both of us up to this point, you could pair a Navy blazer with easily. With, with the exception of, of a, you know, like a Navy chino or a Navy uh, slack, because then it'll look like a mismatched suit. So you don't want, you don't want to do Navy on Navy unless it is indeed a nested suit. Yes, that's true. And that's, um, if you're, if you're new to this, that's something, you know, you can, you can make that mistake um, yeah. thinking, oh, well, this will look like a suit. And then it actually kind of can um, be detrimental as far as how other people perceive you. Because that's, yes. in your mind, it might work, but it can also, to other people, look like you're being cheap. Like, I just don't want to have to go out and buy a suit. Uh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> plus, it, you know, it just, it just looks off if you do that. It does. Um, uh, as far as... Um, 
accessories go, um, I would say start with just, you know, long ties. And I'll say the most versatile ties in the beginning you can buy are going to be gray ties, <laughs> uh, burgundy ties, uh, dark green, and ties with blue in them. Um, Again, this is where whenever, you, if you want to introduce pattern in the beginning, the tie is a great place to, to bring it in. If everything else in your outfit is a solid, mm -hmm. well, whatever patterns in your tie, it's going to work. You're going to be yes. okay. But if you have patterns in your outfit, then you have to consider the pattern of the tie. That's where the complication can come in. So in the beginning, just stay with, uh, if you stay with solid ties, it's a very classic look. And it's an easy look uh, to put together. Mm -hmm. um, as far as shoes go, this is, uh, I like the loafer, um, uh, like you were suggesting. For me personally, I would say everyone should start with, um, there are two shoes that I, I say to start with. And that's obviously the black cap toe Oxford Everyone, I think, should have a pair of those because that is the quintessential. If you need to get inaugurated shoe. into the presidency, that's the one you're going <laughs> to. That's the one you're going to wear. That's it. And this is a deviation from you. Uh oh. Uh, I suggest to get a dark, a darker brown full broke. Okay. I find that shoe. Now this is it's a, whenever we're talking about broking talking about the ornamentation on the shoe it'll have you know it looks like little holes you know um, around the shoe and it's just ornamental this is not a dressy well it is a dress shoe but it's not a dressy dress shoe the the lack of broguing on the shoe makes it dressier uh, because well, uh, broguing was originally uh, reserved for country wear correct yeah. right that originally um, and this helped uh, in the beginning, whenever I was learning about these things, helped me to remember is that, you know, as far as the formality of the shoe went, that the broguing originally had a functional purpose um, that used to, those holes, now they're just ornamental, but they used to actually allow whenever you were walking through boggy, moshy yes. land for water yep. to exit the shoe so that when water went in your shoe, it wouldn't just sit in there, it could get out. Uh, so that's what makes it a, cr uh, a country shoe. Um, nowadays, I find it to be extremely versatile in the sense that you can wear a full brogue, dark brown or reddish brown shoe easily with a pair of jeans all the way up through the, um, the blazer and trousers look. Um, and it, It'll look fine with it. Oh, it's you're universal in that way. You're absolutely right, and uh, you know uh, this is, I think, one of the foundational differences between your style and mine, which is uh, out of the I don't know fifteen or so pairs of dress shoes that I own, there isn't a single bit of broguing on any of them. Um, indeed. Uh, that is reflective of our general kind of uh, differences in personality and how we attack clothing. I don't own any tailored sportswear, right? Uh, country wear. Uh, you really like the style, you know, like you, you've bought a lot of the courting stuff, you know, like the literally hunting suits, things like that, uh, which, which is a wonderful look and uh, it has a deep heritage behind it and a deep history. And uh, it's indeed just as detailed as formal city wear, right? Uh, and, and, and just as uh, evolved, but uh, I've never considered myself a sportsman, you know, that's just never been uh, something that led me in my, my uh, appeal to, to tailored clothing. So interestingly, I've never uh, felt the need to get into broguing as much as it has now become city wear. And indeed, 
it is that full wing, wingtip brogue that has become the quote unquote lawyer shoe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I've never gone there uh, because uh, frankly, you know, I, uh, I simply suck at any physical activity. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and what I uh, enjoy about um, tweeds, which that's a whole other topic. Um, oh, yeah. We'll, country, we'll, do, country we'll, do a, we'll do an episode on tweeds. Oh, sure. Uh, is especially nowadays, I mean, you're right. I mean, its origins are in country wear, but nowadays, especially. I mean, in, in America or in Austin, especially Austin, the problem is, is it's, it's not a great climate. It's, between. it's too hot. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's limited how often you can wear it, but uh, tweed is extremely versatile. It's durable and it's versatile. Um, and nowadays you can wear it at the city and nobody, you know, looks at you um, twice. I wouldn't wear it to anything formal, but I mean, you can wear it just everyday wear just fine. Oh, and especially with like jeans and stuff like that, you know, uh, you're right. The versatility of it as far as texture is incredibly high. And because of that, in the last few seasons, you know, generally speaking, this isn't entirely true, but Italian mills are considered to be more progressive than British fabric mills. Um, in the last few seasons, uh, some of the Italian mills have started developing fabrics which look like tweed, but indeed are like eight ounce weight, you know, and really breathable and stuff like that. Because uh, one thing that Italians are really uh, good at is seeing what looks good on the British Isles and then figuring out a way to make it work in their hotter climates, uh-huh. you know? Uh, they're incredibly adept at that. Um, so while stylistically, I tend to generally prefer the British and indeed the American look to the Italian look, uh, as far as innovation in textiles and innovation in tailoring in general, you know, uh, I think the Italians are at the forefront there. Hmm. Um, so the, um, the last thing, uh, I'll suggest as far as, um, some initial stuff that you might want to get into if you're getting into classic style would be obviously, um, the charcoal suit. Um, there it is. I, now this is, this, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Um, because this, I think, might appeal to a certain customer. Um, it's not going to appeal to everyone. Uh, but I would say, you know, you can do the, the two-piece. But if you have the ability to get a three-piece charcoal suit, mm-hmm. especially if you're somebody who travels for work. Excellent point. Yep. A lot. Um, I learned this from a, a movie, actually, by just observing one of the characters in a movie that it just dawned on me the versatility of having a three piece single breasted charcoal suit. Uh, and I mean, if you really want to take it a step further, uh, especially, you know, if you're doing a, a custom suit, get an extra pair of trousers with the suit as well. It's kind of a classic throwback thing to get two pair of trousers because the trousers tend to take a little bit more of a beating, uh, than the jacket does. So if you can get a, an extra pair, um, I would suggest doing it. And, but here's another reason why, especially if you travel, that you can have a charcoal suit, a three-piece charcoal suit and a navy blazer. You throw in, you know, your white shirts with that. You go on a business trip or something. I mean, you have, with a few different ties, you haven't taken very much. And you could take one pair of shoes for the trip if you wanted, um, the black. And you can wear a three-piece charcoal suit. You take the vest off and you can wear it as a two-piece charcoal suit. And it's amazing, especially if you change the tie, how different that will look. It will look like you're wearing a completely different outfit, but all you've done is take one garment off and change the tie. Uh, And if you're traveling, 
uh, and this is where the extra pair of trousers would be helpful. Uh, if you don't want to have to carry um, another set of gray trousers, that navy coat will mm -hmm. work, or the navy blazer will work with those charcoal trousers. And then uh, you could even, if you wanted, you could wear the um, the the vest or the waistcoat with the suit and the trousers, and then put the navy blazer on, and that's a totally other look. So you have all these looks based off of one suit and one blade yep. that you can take with you and travel and it will simplify you know if you travel a lot for work the number of garments that you have to take with you uh i find that that uh is extremely versatile um and that's why you know I, you and i talk about this all the time um but if you can get the waistcoat with a suit mm -hmm. I, I get, yeah, yeah, no. it adds it adds you know Absolutely. versatility and it usually doesn't add a lot of cost to a suit um so those initially those would be my suggestions but the order in which you should buy them largely like i said goes back to the beginning of you know an examination of your lifestyle but just you don't have to um you don't keep it simple you don't have to get carried away in the beginning and that that will help you when you walk into a store like Capra not to be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, and because it's easy to, because whenever you get into this, you'll learn, I mean, all the different fabrics, uh, the different patterns that one can add to their wardrobe. I mean, it can be overwhelming in the beginning. And um, the more you simplify it, the easier of a time you'll have, I think. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, first of all, our lists, I think, probably have at least like a 80 or 90 percent overlap. There's very, very little uh, deviation. Uh, I think the shoes are probably the... <laughs> well, that's where you, uh, you know, I, I, for a long time, the slip-on shoe, like a loafer, was something I wasn't ever really interested in. But it came later in my journey, so to speak, as far as... Um, being interested right. in it um mm -hmm. but then the problem whenever i started getting into it was i guess i mean it's obviously it's the shape of my foot but almost every loafer i put on um was the most uncomfortable shoe i right. could put on and right. uh, right. so i struggled for a long which time which is funny because they're supposedly you know the more comfortable exactly you know and that, that, yeah so it took me a long time and then i finally found that pair with you mm -hmm. uh it felt great yeah. Um, and got me into it. And the more you get into the slip one shoe, the more yeah. you, especially well, if you have a, uh, a more casual lifestyle or just style in general, the loafer is a great shoe to have. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is that, you know, other than the uh, slight shoe deviation there in our lists you know i the way that we put our lists together uh you know uh is very indicative of the fact that i am a clothier and you are what we call a clothes horse right you, you don't <laughs> sell clothing but you really love clothing and, and and you have a lot of yourself invested in how you dress so you are a wearer and I am of course a wearer as well but my professional life re revolves around putting other people into clothing right mm -hmm. and uh, you know as such uh, the reason I you know you approached your uh, list from a veteran clothes wearer and I tried to address um, an issue that I see in my professional life which is uh, people sometimes, and, and you know, th this accounts for a measurable percentage of my clients. It's, it's that first time where it was like, okay, I just got pr promoted at work and I got to start dressing a little better, not so well that, you know, uh, I'm showing up my new bosses, but I got to look better than the people who I've been working with and now will be managing you know, uh, stuff like that. So I kind of, I think, took my list uh, from that angle. And in that regard, 
if I sent someone to their first day on their new job in a set of full brogues, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go over well, you know? So that's another reason that I said, Hey, you know, just get a nice unassuming pair of loafers, uh -huh. you know, just ease into it as much as possible. But uh, no, it, it, very, very interesting. I also just assumed that this was a, a person that would be wearing this stuff to work, you know, uh, whereas the fact is that another subset of my clients, um, they're just like, you know what? I just turned whatever, 30, 35, 40, whatever it is. And I'm like, I'm sick of dressing like this. Help me, help me dress better. In which case your approach might actually be better you know, like, or not even better. It's just, you know, it, it's a very slightly different uh, angle. And in that regard, it's like, if you want to just make a jump, if you just want to like jump into it, then, then you can start off with a couple of bolder moves as uh -huh. opposed to having to sneak your way into a new style without call, uh, uh, calling attention to yourself. Like, which is another reason, like uh, sometimes people come to me and it's like, hey, I've got this party to go to and it's supposed to be kind of dressy, but not too dressy. You know, there's some, gonna be some people in jeans and some people in sport jackets and all of that. Can you, can you, you know, put together an outfit for me? The first thing I say to them is like, I can, but I shouldn't. I shouldn't put together an entire new outfit for you because if you show up, in a totally new set of clothes that obviously are being worn for the first time. You know, you come in with a jacket and slacks and a shirt and new shoes and all of that. People are going to be like, who did you pay to dress you? <laughs> you know, it's like, tell me what you already have, what you're comfortable in wearing. And maybe we'll just put one or two pieces that are new into that look so that you look dressed up, but you don't look like you literally just paid someone to dress you. Right, because that's the worst look of all. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, that establishes two things: one, they actually look good, and two, they now see that I'm in their corner. You know, I'm not after their dollar; I'm after them looking good and comfortable and appropriate. That's it. You know, so like, uh, if you have, if you're ever in that situation. Don't let someone uh, put you in a brand new outfit top to bottom. You're, you're going to look like a, a nouveau riche douche uh, <laughs> with more money than sense, you know, uh, and uh, you're just going to look silly, especially if you're in an environment where people are classically dressed, whether it's full on classic or Ivy or anything like that, uh, where that sort of thing is really looked down upon. You know, uh, clothing should be an extension of yourself, not your clothiers. That's yeah. true. That's it. Yeah, you, yeah. That's the whole point is that the deeper anybody gets into this, if you start safe and you can build off of that safe point, like we've been talking about, uh, that's where you can develop your own style and that's where it really gets fun. And that's where you really, you know, your clothes start to become an extension of your personality. Um, uh, the, the last thing um, I'll say, uh, I've got three, um, these are the, the fun things. Um, I wouldn't suggest these be your initial purchase, but I'd say maybe your initial uh, fun purchase. Cool. Um, and the first one I'll talk about is just from personal experience. I, you know, no hair. So that got me whenever I started shaving my head, really got me into hats. Mm -hmm. uh, more out of a, a you know necessity than, than anything else, and obviously now when you walk around, the most common hat you see people wearing is a baseball cap. Um, but that's, not, that's not a that's not a hat. That's a cap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you're looking to get into hats, um, the first hat I would suggest that you get, and this goes back to your style um, and. Uh, how you want to wear it. And, and then also I'm suggesting this based off of being in Austin where it's mainly pretty warm. Uh, if you want to get, and this came up, unfortunately mine, um, I don't want to have to go across the room. I'll disappear for too long to get it. It is a Panama hat. This is a talking. Yeah. This is the, uh, uh, it's kind of the fedora S style hat, uh, for the summer or the, the warmer months they are made out of straw. Uh, there it is. 
And they're actually, the, the really good ones are, they're made in Ecuador, <laughs> believe it or not. They're called a Panama hat, but they're made in Ecuador. Uh, the well, Americans just uh, happened to buy them in Panama. Uh, that's right, initially, and that's where the name came from. But the, the good ones, the straw, will have a stamp on the inside. And if it says it's made in Ecuador, that's a good thing. Um, what does yours say? Ecuador. Uh, oh, I'm scared. Uh, <laughs> Handmade in Ecuador. There you go. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Even though they're called a Panama hat, and they're usually, the good ones are made in Ecuador. Shout out to the hat box people, uh, Congress yeah. Street. They, they, they set me straight. And with a hat, you have to, you just have to try them on. Uh, the hat box in Austin is a great place if you're looking for a hat to go in uh, because there's just no way. Uh, to get it to look right on you, to try and buy a hat online, you have to go in and uh, just try some hats on, and you'll see what works with you. And everybody in the beginning, when you first put a hat on, that is it's like the first time you wear an ascot. I mean, if you're not used to wearing uh, classic hats, you're going to think, well, I don't know about this. Uh, but a Panama hat's a great hat. It's very versatile. And it's a very neutral hat overall. The band can be different colors but the straw itself is neutral. So it's going to work with almost everything. It's a casual hat that's easy to wear in a warm climate. The straw is very, uh, yeah, yeah. what am I trying to say? It's uh, Light. ventilated. Yeah. yeah, it lets air pass through it very easily. So it's not a hot hat to wear in the summertime versus like a wool fedora. It would be much too warm for the summer months. Um, the only time you wouldn't really want to wear a Panama hat is it's not a winter hat. Uh, it kind of looks out of place if you're wearing it during the fall winter months. It's more of a spring summer hat. It's also not like a business or true evening hat. No, right. It's casual. It's casual. Um, and if you don't want to do a Panama hat, the, the key there is the brim on, on those style hats, the fedora style hats. They have real wide, medium, and then narrow brim. And that's where your face shape will determine which one's going to work best on you. And that's why you just have to try them. Uh, but the other type of hat, which I actually have one here behind me, these were the ones that I got into originally was, uh, they're called driver caps. Um, you've probably seen them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, it just looks like something a chauffeur might, uh, might right. wear, but they're, they're a great easy hat. This one's made out of linen, uh, which is great for the summer months here because it's not going to be as hot as a wool driver. Um, so I suggest, you know, if you're into hats and you want to wear a hat with more tailored looks, a driver cap and or a Panama works great in Austin. Uh, the Panama is probably more versatile, versatile in my opinion. And it's going to work with more looks. You can go from real casual to you can wear it with a uh, the blazer. and sure. Sports coat. Khaki uh, yep. trousers. It looks great. Uh, the next thing I'll suggest for Austin, uh, that's kind of a fun thing to get into. And it's also a need is a linen shirt, a white linen shirt, um, sure. because linen is very great, uh, for the summer months. It'll, uh, allow the air to pass through it much more so than like an Oxford cloth. It's a real tight weave versus linen allows the air to pass through. It's much cooler. You can definitely tell. If you've been wearing uh, tighter weave shirts for a while, and then you put a linen shirt on and go outside when it's hot, oh. you can just feel the air moving. Yes. You were wearing one with your seersucker yes. uh, videos back. Uh, and a white linen is great because you can wear it casually, no tie. You can wear it um, with that blazer. It looks great. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also wear it with a tie. And it's a great summer shirt to have. It's more casual. Don't wear it for formal. Right. Uh, but if you're going to be in and out and it's kind of a, just a regular day, they're a great shirt to have. And the last thing, this is one that I don't think I'll ever get you into. Um, but I'm into it just because of my personal style. Uh, if you're so inclined, your first fun pair of shoes would be spectator shoes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you probably, um, all seen spectator shoes, mainly in old photographs or maybe old movies. Um, now, I will say, you might be shocked, I, I, I used to wear spectators quite a bit. 
Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, because, you know, uh, spectators, are, believe it or not, are uh, in a lot of British punk style uh, a thing. And, uh, you know, in the late 90s, early aughts, when I was in punk bands in New York City, that was, that was a real go-to for me. Oh, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. I've never would have imagined you wearing a spectator. No, uh, man. Dude, I used to wear spandex <laughs> pants and feather boas. <laughs> <laughs> um, my connection with them is uh, uh, I got into spectators through swing dancing. Um, yep. I'm a swing dancer is big in the swing scene. It's a very 30s through maybe 50s look if you wear spectator shoes, and they're definitely not a business shoe. I wouldn't no. wear them to work. No, no. It's a, it's a fun, casual shoe that can work great with uh, chinos uh, all the way up through um, more tailored looks. Actually, in, in the 60s, also, uh, the dandy uh, mod, dandy and mod movement, uh, especially over in England, was big into spectators. Mm. The And if you do, and when we're talking about spectators, because I didn't define that, it's a, it's a two-tone shoe. Uh, usually the most common that you've probably seen is a brown uh, with a white contrasting leather. Um, one thing I've recently been looking more into them and in, in uh, the UK, spectator shoes are known as co-respondents. Um, and that's, uh, they came about as a cricket shoe. It comes out of sportswear um, that I think John Lobb, was the first to make a spectator no shoe. Uh, this was interesting that what would happen is that the cricket shoe used to be like an all white leather, but it, being all white, it got dirty extremely quickly. So John Lobb, uh, a shoemaker in uh, the UK, he came up with the spectator where they basically put a dark leather, either black or brown, on the front and the back of the shoe where it got dirty first the most yeah yeah so that that's where the spectators origins were and when people started wearing them outside of just a sporting event initially and obviously uh they were not considered very gentlemanly Mm -hmm. and that's where in the uk the correspondent nature uh or the nice thing where this yeah you were going to be involved in some kind of court case at some point that's right (laughs) you were walking around in spectators uh but I'll say this, that if you get a spectator shoe, there's a lot of different kinds. The main thing is that they're two-tone. Um, that if you go with a, a brown and white leather, that's probably the most classic American-style spectator. Uh, it's very jazz age look. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do a black with a white leather. That looks great, too. Uh, but if you do a like a brown leather with canvassing instead of a, a contrasting leather, it's a canvas. That's a very British spectator shoe. Uh, that's one thing that I've learned recently is that, I mean, I've always known it was a British spectator, but that it was worn in warm climates um, as Brits would travel because of the canvassing not being leather. Mm-hmm. It was a cooler shoe to wear in the summer. And yeah. Uh, stateside, uh, the, you know, uh, things that come to mind with spectator shoes. It's a, it's a wonderful shoe to wear with seersucker suiting. Oh yeah. Um, that's the classic look also linen, but it's also the go-to shoe for a lot of guys for, uh, attending the Kentucky Derby. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a very, very classic style. I die. I'm so down with the spectator. My- those were my, uh, my three fun things, yeah. initial things that somebody might consider getting into once they've gotten beyond the, the initial basics. Very cool. Um, I hadn't thought about the fun uh, aspect, and I'm glad that you did. Uh, thinking about it, one thing that I've really enjoyed that was actually a gift is a, uh, a cane a walking like stick. That. Uh, that, that's a real fun thing. But, you, you know, you, you got to have some balls to... You know, it's on par with the ascot as far as things to pull off, you know. For sure. Well, all right. Uh, as I expected, uh, we didn't really have time to, to get into complexion and uh, contrast. But, you know, that, I almost feel that we should uh, devote a whole episode to that uh, at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, meaning 
complexion and contrast in uh, one's appearance and, and how to pair that with the uh, color combinations. But at any rate, the next time that we get together, we will be talking about uh, what makes a good classic piece of tailored wear, like a jacket or a suit, uh, high quality. Uh, uh, what's the difference between a $150 suit and a $2,000 suit and a $5,000 suit? Uh, and all of those uh, kinds of things. Because of that, you know, uh, that's, that's a point of quite a bit of confusion, I find, uh, in my line of work. And frankly, it's a very, very good question because especially for people who are first getting into classic wear, when they find out how much some of this stuff costs, you know, longevity aside, like we've already talked about and cost efficiency aside, um, you know, you tell them that a jacket and a pair of pants cost $2,500 and they're like, wait, I, that's more than I paid for my car, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we'll be getting into things like that. So until then, uh, I thank you all for watching. I thank you, Russell, for uh, uh, joining me. And uh, that's fun. You know, yeah. uh, we got to do something, right? Oh, yeah, one last thing I'll throw in there for anybody who's uh, watched us uh, all along. Our last um, video um, where we were talking about taking care of your clothing. Mm -hmm. I don't think either one of us mentioned. Uh, but we have to throw this in to, is to get a good um, a garment brush. Oh, a clothes brush for clothes sure. Brush. Yeah, that's a, to brush your clothing because you know yes. lint will get on it and uh, that sort of thing. A brush. Uh, that's right. Have. And uh, try excellent point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, try to stay away from those lint roller uh, yeah. things because the adhesive nature of them will actually pull on the fabric. And uh, we'll actually, uh, you know, uh, oftentimes, uh, especially with some lower quality fabrics, we'll actually, you know, pull threads and, and uh, cause pilling over time and things like that. Uh, what you really want is a soft horsehair uh, clothes brush, which will be far less ab abrasive. Uh, always brush in one direction um, and, uh, that's actually a much, much better way to, to go as far as getting rid of lint or just dust or anything, but yes, excellent point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thank you until next time. All right.